Electoral Court has today heard a case between the IEC and five political parties. Arise South Africa has described the move as an unwarranted exclusion from the ballot, while the IEC accuses uh, ASA of failing to upload its regional lists. Party leader Mpota Gada is with us for more on that. Good to have you, and thank you very much for coming on. Good evening, and thank you so much for having me. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's a confusing story a little bit, but I'm sure you'll, you'll be able to clear it up for us uh, uh, quite quickly, right? What happened exactly on, on the 27th of March? So what happened is the Rise of Africa was on the national provincial ballot. So we were both on national and the provincial ballot. And when we inquired to say, why were we not on the regional ballot, as people would know, there are three ballot papers, we were then informed that, no, it was an administrative error. We should not even be on the national ballot. And that's when we decided to go on a march to the IEC to try and find out why were we removed overnight without any explanation. Yeah. When we asked for an explanation, we were told that it's an administrative error. However, we proved today, or we, we, we said today in court, that why would we go ahead and collect over 60,000 signatures to qualify us for national and provincial? Why would we pay 750,000 rand to participate, only for us to omit or to leave out uh, a small part of the requirements? Yeah. So we're in court today to get the court to hear our matter and hopefully grant us to be able to participate uh, in the election as people would want us. Is that the same for all the five parties, or is it just that, that particular case uh, pertains to you? No, so that particular ca case pertains to us. Some of the other parties had different uh, cases that they were presenting. All right, so let's look at that question, because the, the, the chairperson says, no, it's not a system error. You did not comply, right? So they admit that the national list you did submit, so it's checked. Yes. The provincial list you did submit. Yes. And the, the issue they say you didn't submit the regional list. That's where the question is, yeah. Right. And, and you're saying, well, we, we paid in full even for the regional list. Yes, so we did submit the regional list. They're saying they didn't receive it. Right. Yeah. And, and, and how, how do you now then prove the paperwork to say we sent it and they didn't receive it? Yeah, so, so, so look, I think throughout the whole process, we've been collecting physical signatures. Okay. We've been writing things on paper. We've also been uploading stuff on the online system. I think where, where the bulk of the confusion comes from is where they are not actually having enough administrative manpower to be able to handle all the systems that they've put in place. Yeah. Because like any other election, you would ask somebody to say, why would you pay 750000 and not be there on the regional list? Why are you giving us extra money? Yeah. Uh, we, we're not in a position to be donating extra money in 300,000 rand to, yeah. to the IEC. Yeah. So, so we find that those are the issues. And they did admit to us. They said, look, we made an administrative error. Administrative team has been making errors. And there's been lots of of errors that have actually happened. So we find that the new regulation, the IEC is not fully prepared to, to deal with it. And I think that they should have given themselves more time to be able to implement it. But we are where we are, where we believe and we are asking to say, look, we have been going on the basis that we are on the national ballot and we've done everything to qualify. It, it doesn't make sense for you to omit us from the national ballot after we've done everything to actually qualify. Yeah. Your, your argument, though, was, was to say, even if say we did make the error, that we didn't submit the original list. Uh, Section 28 says you were supposed to notify us. And, yes. And, and that they didn't do. No, they did not notify us. And also we believe that it should be in the interest of the IEC to ensure that the votes, the people, actually get who they want to be on the ballot paper. Yeah. The requirements to be on the ballot paper were quite clear, to say you must collect the signatures, which is a very grilling process. But however, we were able to do it in a period of a year, and we actually collected more. And to also say you must pay the deposit. We're saying that we've qualified and we've done all that. The will of the people has happened. We've gone out in the whole country and expected people to sign physical signatures on forms. I mean, collecting 60,000 signatures, this was not a child's play. Mm -hmm. And while we're collecting the signatures, we were informing people to say, we're doing this because you will see us on the national ballot paper yeah. and the provincial ballot paper. And how and does it affect that work now? Uh, to, I mean, to, 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 exactly. To, 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 to say uh, to, to people now, no, you're not uh, actually uh, compliant, and so you're removed from the national and, and the provincial list and the regional list. I think the, the most inconveniencing thing is having to tell people that the IAC said that they made an administrative error and they admit to it and they're therefore sorry about it. And I think a lot of people are sort of asking questions to say, but this cannot be happening so close to an election. And I think for me also, it's, 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 it's something that has weighed down on a lot of our voters, because a lot of our voters are first-time voters. Young people out there are saying, look, we're, we're old and 
We're, we're getting tired of the old legacy systems of politics that we know, where they come in and they do speeches and there's no actual implementation to the level that they want to see. And they say, we need new faces, we need new people, we need young engineers, young doctors leading at the forefront mm. that have studied the latest systems that exist out there and technologies that exist that could better the lives of our people. And for them to experience this sort of thing on the eve of the election is very disappointing. But however, we have encouraged everybody to say we believe that our courts are, are, are very just in the way that they deal with matters, and we look forward to hearing what our courts will actually rule on this matter. It's a big point in, 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 in the campaigns, if you like, where everybody is now almost moving into final gear. You should also be moving into final gear. You've got this hurdle that you're, you're dealing with. I'm sure without this certainty, you also, for example, can pump in money into more posters or whatever else that parties do at this particular point uh, in time. Has it halted your own timetable? Look, I think it's very unfortunate because the Rise of Africa is one of the few political parties that's actually not funded. We, we don't have any donors that have given us any funds. This is money that young people themselves and citizens that love our country have been able to chip in your 100 rands, your 200 rands, your 20 rands to be able to pay for the IEC deposit and ensure that Arise South Africa is where it is today. Where we are, we're saying to people out there that we are on the national uh, sorry, the nine provincial ballots. And as a result of that, we are campaigning to ensure that when the court does rule, we're not, you know, caught off guard and not having our, our systems already going. So we're busy with our party agents. We're busy campaigning every day. And we're also asking citizens out there to say, those that can donate to a political party like Arise South Africa, please do do donate to us because we want to ensure that we do have our posters out there. We do our or our in full campaign gear or uh, campaigning mode. But we do need funds, we need businesses, we need people that are generous and willing to donate to our cause to rescue South Africa, to come on board and assist us yeah. in the great work that we're doing. Having engaged with the process, if you were to sit down with the IEC and give them feedback, because I'm, I'm sure they, they tell us that they have these processes with political parties where you sit and they tell you where we are and, 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 and so on and, and so forth in terms of the process. What would be your input? What would you tell them to change? I think the first thing is that they try to squeeze the process in too short a space of a time. I believe that an election is a very important thing. As you're electing officials that will be running the budget of the country yeah. for the next five years. Yeah. And I believe that they should have taken more time with this. We should have had about, about nine months that they put out in place. And within two months spaces or three months spaces, they're able to check the boxes and continue to inform the citizens. For them to push everything to a point where now we're in court just a few days before the election, I believe that it's something that, that shouldn't be happening. Um, however, at the same point as well, we do also understand that South Africans are at a point where they, they, they are tired of the things that the way that they are and they are looking forward to vote for a new government in Arise South Africa. So at the same time, we're also hopeful and optimistic to say that people will be able to see this for what it is, to say that before David conquers a Goliath, there will always be that bit of inconvenience or that bit of opposition that comes through. But however, it does not mean that young David will not be able to knock out Goliath. It still means that he'll be able to do it. We just need to show that we believe and we have hope and we support the campaign right up until the end. Yeah. What, what, is, what is your strategy? What's your plan? How do you plan to um, uh, take over a seat of, of, of government? I mean, a small party like yourself, one would look at it and say, again, you're a David, you're right, you're facing a, a, a Goliath, but how are you going to bring down the Goliath one chunk at a time? Look, I think the truth, so our rise South Africa, ever since we started, we've been going on the truth. And I think the truth is that South Africans are beginning to see that after 30 years of democracy, living in one of the richest countries in the world, there's a report that says that South Africa is in the top three richest countries in the world. So citizens are beginning to see it for what it is to say, look, we live in a country that has all these minerals. We've got platinum reserves, gold, vanadium, titanium, manganese, titanium oxide. We have all this mineral wealth, yet majority of our people live in poverty. Young people have no jobs. Our healthcare system is dysfunctional. Crime is rampant. The murder rate is scary. Women, GBV, abuse, scary. And people are starting to say, let's actually face the truth. What is the problem that is causing all these issues in a country that has everything to make it work? And people are starting to ask the right questions to say, perhaps it is the leadership structures that we've got, that we've got systems that just send our ANC cadres to go and loot in parastatals. And now we have no process that's functional. Now we have no state enterprise 
enterprises that are functional, perhaps we need to actually put our trust in the next generation. Because if you look at it, when a system in itself continues to suppress young people and continues to actually destroy their future, mm. what begins to happen is the whole nation suffers. Yeah. Because it is the young people that must pave the way for the future. So South Africans are beginning to realize that Arise South Africa is actually telling us the truth. That it's high time we get young, capable people. Because if we look at why people fought in apartheid, it was so that the next generation can come and take us to the next state of freedom, which is economic freedom. You can't do that with the same systems that got us out of apartheid. Mm, mm. You need young people that understand how the fourth industrial revolution works, young people that are educated, that understand how manufacturing works, how industry works, so that we don't have the excuse of shipping our minerals and saying everything is too difficult to actually create. I mean, a simple toothpick is manufactured in China and sold back to South Africa. You can't tell us that young people here that are graduating in UCT, in Wits University, in UJ, where I come from, are all incompetent of being able to do these things. So young people are saying, give us a chance. We want to ensure that we fix the economy. We know South Africa has got potential to become a global superpower. Give us a chance and vote for us, and we'll be able to ensure that these things happen. Dr. Gada, appreciate your time. Thanks so much uh, for coming on. That is Dr. Gada of Arise South Africa. Wish them well, and uh, of course we watching that outcome of that uh, court battle with the IEC.